welcome my friends to the show that never ends this is red all overs away end show where we look at the opposition that we'll be facing shortly to achieve this we'll be talking to fans of the opposition so i hope you enjoy the show if you do please give us a like if you'd like to comment please comment it'd be lovely to read what you think as well i would also say as if you feel able to subscribe it's in true yorkshire fashion it costs absolutely nothing to subscribe so why not click the button then you'll be told all about future red all over shows if you know somebody that don't watch the show or hasn't subscribed give him a nudge say it's worth it finally cast your mind back i remember a four-year-old boy being lifted over the turnstiles to his first match at Oakwell, standing on the cop watching his heroes heroes such as Barry Murphy. Now fast forward 60 odd years, the cop is now an all-seater stand and it's named the Barry Murphy stand after the legend. That four-year-old boy is now finally, after all these years, back on the away end. Enjoy the show. Roll the titles. <laughs> Hiya, yeah, this is George from the Wickham Way. Tell us about yourself and about about your podcast. Uh, our podcast is, I don't want to call it a shambles because we try and make it as professional as possible, uh, but it's just a bunch of us sat there with a beer talking about Wickham, uh, which I understand is probably not everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> Uh, but we we enjoy it. We try to do things a little bit differently. Uh, we don't like to be too, I guess, PC or too proper. We like to sit there with a beer and talk about whatever's going on. If it if it make you should feel a lot happier doing this show than George, because <laughs> when when we set up when we set up the Red All Over show to come on YouTube, we uh, we always wanted to have the feel of mates either sat mm, you know yeah. either, either sat in a bar having a beer or sat in a coffee shop having a coffee, wherever it is, you know, if it depends if there's kids about. Um, talking about, you know, talking about football, talking about their team, talking about football in general, and taking the Mickey out to each other as mm -hmm. mates do. As so it that, should be. Yeah. That's how that's how we do it. So especially me. So I, I hope don't don't expect don't expect a lot of you know intelligent debate. <laughs> don't don't expect that. But expect hopefully <laughs> expect a bit of fun. That's what people like to watch, a bit of fun, people just talking. So let's get on with it. Let's get all over it, George. If you're ready, let's get on. Right. First question, and these are only loose questions. First question, tell me about Wickham's style and formation. Tell us about that. Uh, well, style is it's still fairly long ball. Uh, I think we gained a reputation under Rainsworth of being yeah. a bit of a hoofball team, uh, rightly so. And I, I don't think we've got rid of that just yet. Uh, formation, we've switched to a four at the back now, off starting with a five at the back. Um, I, I think at your place in November, we settled very defensively. Yeah. Um, I think we set up to get a draw, ultimately didn't get one because of, you know what. Um, but we, we've sort of tried to come out of our shell a little bit more in recent weeks, four at the back, chuck a few men up front and, and try and just sort of score more than the opponents, I guess. I've I've got to mention our the, the the reverse fixture just briefly. I don't know if you know this, but uh, Cosgrove's goal, you know, with with his debacle mm -hmm. with the goalkeeper, it was voted our goal of the month. And oh, you, I did see that. You, yeah. you can imagine. You can. I'm not saying it was. Well, you can imagine why. You can imagine why it was a good. You know that. You know. So, oh, I've never seen anything like it on the football and I don't think I will see anything like it for a long time. I think the referee just got fed up with the goalkeeper at the time. Mm. It's stri 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 what, what was his uh, name? Stri Depends who you ask. We call him Strijek or Strijek. Yeah, Strijek. That'll do. There's along those lines, yeah. But he's, not, he's not played recently. Has he? He's not played last match, has he? Uh, he got a red card against Stevenage yeah. at the weekend. So he's oh, out right. the weekend. So he, he won't be playing this weekend either. So we'll avoid a, a reoccur. Oh, that's, that's a pity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I wish you'd have appealed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, didn't a, we didn't have a leg to stand on. He, he took out the Stevenage striker. He was one on one and just wiped him out completely. So we had no argument in our favour at all. 
I think the I just think the referee got fed up with him. It didn't do any harm last night against Cheltenham, though, did it? No, a, a clean sheet, and I mean, did, yeah. you know, he didn't have much to do, but a clean sheet on league day, but you can't really ask much more than that, can you? No, Tony, you've signed signed a couple of players, aren't you, in the transfer window in in January transfer, which mm-hmm. are both permanently and uh, and a couple on loan as well. Can you tell me a bit about them? Uh, yeah, a really good window uh, overall. Uh, yeah, we were sort of expecting a few loanees to come in. Uh, because we lost quite a few players in January, I think six or seven out the door. Oh, I didn't um, know that. Didn't realize. Yeah, quite that. a quite a big exit um, actually. Uh, Loanies going back that just didn't work. Uh, a few players that we brought in in the summer just weren't playing, so they're out the door. So I think at least six or seven, maybe even more than that. Um, and we brought in again five or six who actually have improved us uh, quite a lot actually. Um, a few low knees who are yet to really hit the ground running, but also signings from Plymouth on loan permanently who look to put us in good stead to sort of just this season and beyond that as well. I mean, your top goal scorers, unless I'm mystery, your top goal scorer is your left back. <laughs> Which, look, look, was it Lee? Uh, Luke Lee? Leahy. I mean, Leahy. on paper, he is our left back, but he was never brought in to play left back. Yeah. I think we've had selection issues and injury issues in that area, so he's been forced to play there. Uh, Shrewsbury's play of the year last yeah. season. Uh, he's been a really good player at this level for a few years now. Um, so when we yeah. signed him, we sort of thought, you know, he's going to hold down our midfield for a good two or three years. Hasn't quite worked out that way just yet. But, you know, he's still a very important player. Pops up with goals and assists. Um, I think he got an assist last night, albeit from a set piece, but uh, a wand of a left foot. And, you know, he's still providing at both ends. Is he the player that takes your corners? I saw, I saw some of your highlights um, from mm. last night on some beautiful deliveries from corners. I mean, if we saw sort of, you, know. you would think that your set piece takes are the one thing you don't change, but it seems to be this season that every other corner it's someone different. And we, I think we've looking at our penalty stats, we've only scored six out of 10 this season and we've had five different penalty kick takers. Um, so right. it's the one thing that we can't settle on. But yeah, he's got a, a really good left foot, especially last night against quite a small keeper for Cheltenham. Yeah. Stick and rot on his head and you're going to cause problems. Well, I'd have said that our big... Because I know that you play it, uh, you play it long and high and you know, get, get in people's faces. I thought that might be, a you know, a, a couple of weeks ago, I thought it might be a real pro- a, a massive problem for us, particularly mm. Sam Vokes up front. Um but we've signed Donovan Pines from DC United that made his mm. his uh, his home debut last week, and he's a giant. He's <laughs> he's not he's not the ball. He's not Franz Beckenbauer, but my goodness, we've got a couple either side of him that can that can play with the ball. Mm. But my goodness, he's made a huge difference because we've been susceptible, um, quite to, to quite a degree, particularly on on our the right of our defence in the air. And he's, he's, he's bound to make a mistake somewhere along the line. But, oh, dear me, he's made <laughs> such a difference to our side. Mm. You've now got, is it Lubala? I don't yes. want to pronounce his yeah. name wrong. Yeah, because you've got him on loan as well. And he knows how, he knows how to score, doesn't he? Uh, he's a, a permanent signing. Oh, is it? oh, yeah, yeah. He left yeah. Burton in January. He was there on a short-term deal. Left Burton. Right. I mean, he was offered quite a good contract to stay there, actually. So I'm not sure what we've offered him. Yeah. To sort of come to Wickham, but it must have been sort of quite tasty because he's turned them down to come to us for a few years. He was their top scorer, as, as far as I can remember. He, I think he was. I think you're right, actually. Yeah. So, mm. not looking bad then. Not looking bad. Mm-hmm. What, what What would you say your recent performances have been like? Well, oh, very hit and miss. I mean, if you look at our form going back to October, it's pretty poor. I mean, it's uh, pretty poor. Is putting it lightly. It's horrendous. I think we're five wins in 20, 25 games. Um, yeah, we just can't seem to get a good run of form together. There's no consistency. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we battered Peter for 5-2. Yeah. Next weekend, we're drawing 0-0 and then losing 1-0 away at Stevenage, who, you know, just despite where they are in the league, they're not a good footballing team. So, um, yeah, we just can't seem to hit any sort of consistency any run of form, it's just very much you don't know what to expect game to game, which at this stage in the season is a, a bit of a problem. You've got a good record at home over the last six matches, six or seven matches. Mm. I won, mean, it, won three and drawn three. So <laughs> we're not winning it. very many, but we're not losing very many at all. It's 
a lot of draws in there than games that really we should be winning against the teams in and around us. We always perform well against a team sort of top half and above anywhere around us and we sort of seem to struggle, which, you know, it hasn't always been the case with Wickham. We've always been really good at dispatching the poorer teams, struggling against the big ones, but we just can't seem to sort of get far enough away from that relegation picture. Yeah, but is it, I'm trying to remember now, about eight points clear, I think. You've got a lot more. I think a, we are after last way, night, I think it's eight points. Fair away from any playoffs, but yeah. yeah, I think I think it's, yeah, after last night's win, yeah, mm-hmm. I think it is eight points. But let me ask you, so from our point of view, I, I know we saw you not that long ago, but there's been, like you've said, there's a number gone in and gone out. But who are the players for Bansley fans to watch, you know, to watch for, both for, to watch out for, you know, that <laughs> might hurt us, but also that's interesting, you know, to watch for because they're good players. I mean, I, I'd like to think it'll be a completely different game on Saturday than the game at your place. I don't think it'll be quite as one-sided. Um, I think there'll be a few more goals than just the one as well. Uh, in terms of who to watch out for, I think Dale Taylor's hitting form at the right time. Um, I think he came to your place and played up front. Didn't really get on the end of too much at all. We've sort of pushed him back into a attacking midfield role and he's sort of flourishing there. Um, so he's certainly one to look out for. Uh, new signing Labada, uh, obviously first goal last night, and he looks really, really quite good. Um, but other than that, I don't think there's too many changes to the the first eleven. I think we've just sort of brought in a lot of quality and depth rather than people who have sort of come in and changed the shape and the system straight away. So I'd expect very much sort of the same Wickham team with a, a few slight tweaks, and hopefully a, a better performance at our end. I mean, Barnsley fans would remember uh, Kieran Sadlier from from his time at Doncaster, which is our, you know. Might not know our near neighbours, but obviously, as your captain, although he didn't play last night, Josh Scowen, he's mm. you know he, he's he's a he's a legend at Oakwell. People really, people still really like him. You know, like some players leave and you think, mm-hmm. oh, they've gone now. I'm not interested you know, and all that. Not yeah. Josh Scowen. People really rate Josh Scowen, and mm. so many fans like him and would, and would always clap him. We've seen him a few times in the crowd when he's when Bans has yeah. been playing other teams. He's you know he's come along to watch. So he's a, a, uh, he's yeah. a damn good player in midfield. He goes yeah. down well as well. <laughs> he's we we've got Herbie Kane the same that if anybody goes near him he goes down with splayed legs. So <laughs> jo, jo, Josh for I don't know if he's doing it for you. Josh always did it for us. He could, ta- he oh, could we, we love Josh. We absolutely love him. Uh, I love, I, Obviously, we're in the um the what is it the uh, Bristol Street Motors final in April. I think Josh is going for his third win in that competition, along with sadly, we won it at um Rotherham. I think he won it at. Yeah. So we've got a few yeah. players who have been there and done it. But no, we we both of them sadly and Josh great players. Um, especially Josh, I think we just tied him down to a new long term deal. So hopefully, he's going to stay at Wickham <laughs> until he retires. I'd love him back. Let me <laughs> ask you this: I've asked you about. Who um, it, it, this is just between me and you, so mm-hmm. don't uh, you know nobody else will get to hear this. Where are your weaknesses? I promise oh, you, I'll, well, not, well, I'll not tell Barnsley Football Club. Just just t- between us. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a tricky question because I don't think we've got too many obvious ones. I know that's the easy answer, but you know we we play a lot of games usually where we don't look like scoring. You know, I don't, we haven't lost by more than one goal since September. Um, any game we lose is a, a really tight game. So there's not really any, you know, major issues. I guess the fact that we're playing a midfielder at left back is a slight concern. Um, I don't know how fast your wingers are, but sort of the small, pacey wingers often a, a, a pain in our backside. But, you know, other than that, I think we're fairly good defensively, even on this poor one of form. We never really look like we're going to concede too many goals yeah. and we don't really get dominated too much either. Um, so I'd say, yeah, the main weakness is probably the lack of pace in our fullback position. Yeah, yeah. We don't we don't play particular. Well, we don't play with wingers. We play with a back three <laughs> and, and wing backs. But That's our fine wing, then. For our wing backs, particularly our right wing back, he's been playing centre back most of the season. But since we've got big Dominic mm. uh, uh, Donovan Pines playing, he's moved to his more natural position at right wing, at right wing back, and he is very quick. Mm-hmm. So both our wing backs get forward quickly, um, but uh, Jordan Williams is very quick down the right. So mm-hmm. hopefully he'll be able to, to do that a, a little <laughs> bit more. We've we've talked. Well, I've talked a bit about Scowen and about uh, Herbie Kane. 
we've got a thing on, on in, in our show called Tumble Down Ted. Now, sometimes he plays for us. He's a little teddy bear that goes down as soon as somebody looks at him funny. <laughs> or if, if as well as a sniper in the crowd. Sometimes he plays for us, which is some, he, he sometimes pretends there is Devante Cole and he sometimes presents, pre pretends there is uh, Herbie Kane. Sometimes he plays for the opposition. So, who do you, imagine that it's the last minute, the ball's thrown into the penalty area, who's going to go down like he's been shot? Uh, it, it's Josh Scullin. <laughs> I think it, but he, he's so, he doesn't do it in a way that he's trying to take the mick or nothing. He knows no. that if it goes down the right way, he's going to sort of, he's very, very clever in the way he goes into challenges. Um, you know, it, in typical Gary Neville fashion, when you sort of hear the ooh after a bad tackle, you know that after Josh is put in one of the ones where it's a little bit on the iffy side, he's going to go down holding his leg because he knows he's done wrong. But normally it goes in his favour. Um, and you, you mentioned Devante Cole there for you. Uh, it might shock you. I'm doing a, a Barnsley save in Football Manager. <laughs> Me and a few mates, we all picked the name out of the hat for League One clubs. And I think one of Devante Cole's, um, oh, what are they called? One of his uh, things in his profile was that he goes down easily. <laughs> Oh, he, he's been known to. He has been known yeah. to. Uh, so, what, what what are your thoughts on this game? How do you think it's going to pan out? Uh, I, I think it'll be much different to the game at your place. Um, I, I expect a few more goals than just the one, and I expect the goals to come in a different manner, I hope. Uh, I think it'll be much more open. You know, a, a Tuesday night away trip for any team in any league is always a a difficult one and you have always want to go there and sharp shot rather than really express yourself but I think for, especially for you coming down to us on a Saturday you can play with a bit more freedom which will hopefully allow for a much sort of, I guess higher quality game than what we had at your place oh, I hope so I mean we've we've got an, an exceptional away record mm. um, I mean we've drawn a few um, we had a thing last year where we if we went behind that was it we, we never mm. would have went behind yeah well, we have this season. You know, we've still, you know, we we seem to have got that right. There, there seem to be a number of times where we went behind early on. I'm not sure that'll still happening with uh, Don Don Pines playing there because we often went behind through a high ball into the area and not you know not big enough defenders. Mm -hmm. So we've changed our defence from having having a number of players that um, were inexperienced. We've now got uh, as well as the De Jeveny, who's a, a really really good. Yeah. Really Defender. We've now got Pines, as I've said. We've also signed Josh Earl in January from yeah, a smart signing, and he's been he's been outstanding. It, I'm, mm -hmm. You watch. I'm, I'm always careful about what I say because I say that, and he'll make a monumental mistake. Yeah. You know, he'll score an own goal. He'll give a penalty away. All that. So I've got to be really careful. But he, some of his play has been absolutely mm. superb. So yeah. where our defence has always has been our weakness, if you like. Um, over you know over a number of months, but we've scored goals. Mm. That's certainly tightened up a lot. So uh, yeah, I've got to say I've when I saw that, that you loaned out um Casper Laparta, I was quite surprised by that because I thought it was a mainstay in your team. But I think actually you've managed to strengthen that defensive area. Casper had been out injured for for a while. He started the season off pretty well, but he got injured, so mm. we were out for a while and couldn't get his way back in. So it's yeah. it's good for him. And we've loaned Jack Shepherd out, who was inexperienced. Yeah. Who's who's a good centre up? Is a is a young inexperienced one, so they'll they'll both stand in good stead for the future, either with mm -hmm. us or if if it yeah. came to it elsewhere. So yeah, I think I do think we've strengthened our defence, but you know time will tell. It should be an open game. If you come mm -hmm. at us, we should we we you know we, we like to get you know like to press and we like to pass it about. We've subtly changed our play from being just possession based and having too much of the ball and across the back line and all that. To really making it pay, so and and like you, we've you know we've got games in hand over the teams above us. You know Derby mm -hmm. and Bolton in particular, who fortunately, incredibly <laughs> lost both lost last night. Thank <laughs> the Lord. Um, so we're gonna we, if we're not up to win this game, with Bolton coming on Tuesday, we'll not be up to win any game because we can make yeah. a huge difference to uh, consolidating our place in the. Um, in the playoffs, and maybe even better. You know, I don't like to get too excited with so many, you know, so many games left. So you want to get silly about it. Where, 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 from your point of view, where do you hope that you'll, uh, you know, for, for the rest of the season, where how do you think it's going to pan out for you? Uh, I think, given where we are at the minute, and sort of, 
we've got the final to look forward to. I don't think it really matters now in the league as such, as long as we're sort of well away from the relegation picture, uh, anywhere from sort of 10th to 16th. I think most people would be happy with that. I mean, if you offered us that sort of season in Bloomfield's first full season, I think most people would snap your hand off. Obviously, you'll get the, the few that are unhappy, but you get them everywhere. They just can't be pleased unless you, you romp into the title. But I think, you know, a, a solid season, uh, give me a 12th place finish, a final at Wembley. That, that's a good season in my book. Oh, I wish you all the best at Wembley. That would be, <laughs> so be some achievement, will not it? Some achievement. So, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions now mm -hmm. that um, you're the crass test dummy or the guinea pig for us <laughs> because we've got two young lads, George and Isaac, who like to model themselves on myself and Alan Smith from the Red All Over Show, so we call them Little Alan Andy. So they're going to ask you a couple of questions. Can you remember your first away game or are you too old like Andy? Uh, like my first Wickham home game uh, many, many years ago, uh, even for me, uh, I think it was Peterborough at home 2007 or 8. 2-2 uh, draw. I think George Boyd was on Peterborough's books back then. Uh, I can't remember who was on Wickham's team. Could not tell you one of the players. Uh, Matt Bloomfield must have been there because he's been there all his life. Yeah. Um, and my first my first away game was a bit more recent. I think it was in the 16-17 season away at Crawley. Um, uh, Bayo Wackenfen was debut, actually, for, for Wickham. Uh, come off the bench, put himself about a bit, beat a few people up. Uh, that was a bit more recent. Um, but yeah, the, the way I got into supporting Wickham was me and a mate were bored one Saturday. Uh, people sort of, oh, what can we do? What can we do? What's a cheap afternoon? Oh, we'll go down to Wickham. Because back, back then, it's like a fiver for number 16 or something. So we, we had a walk down there. Um, and then I think the... A few weeks later, we had a season ticket and we were booked on the coach of the first away game of the season. And ever since then, it's been home and away every single week and I've been hooked. <laughs> Why don't you support a good team like Man City or Liverpool or best of them all, Barnsley? Uh, I mean, I, I, I'll start off with the Barnsley excuse. Uh, that's because I'm 200 miles away. It'd be a bit tricky to get up there every week. Um, you know, most people, they answer this question, I assume, by sort of saying, oh, you know, your dad got them into it or you support your dad's team. Uh, my, my dad tried to get me into supporting Man United at a young age. And, you know, we, we went up there a few times every year. Um, but, you know, once I sort of started going down to Wiccan games and you sort of feel part of a community, you feel like you've got a part to play in the atmosphere. I was just, I was hooked from then on. Um, so whilst I was raised a Man United fan and, you know, not the armchair supporters, we went up there a few times a year. Um, I, was, I, was, I was bored one weekend, went down to Wickham and just, even though the football was crap back then, I, I fell in love with it completely. That's wonderful. I hope it's crap on for your young son on Saturday <laughs> as well. Just this once. Just this once. We need the help. We need help. You see, make it... Pretend that you're a scout and it's your good deed for the day. Let me ask you. <laughs> let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Finally, finally, finally George, what is your prediction? Uh, ooh, just because of how much of a see uh, a roller coaster our season's been, uh, I can't see us getting two wins on the bounce. Uh, at the same time, I can't see us losing it. So I'm going to sit on the fence. Uh, let's have a two-two draw, a few goals. You'll get splinters. You know that, don't you? Oh, I know that okay. absolutely. Well, I'll I'll tell you my prediction very briefly. I always I always predict two one to Barnsley. I always and I'm top of our predict we have a prediction table on the <laughs> in a, on the safe show. Bet. And I and I'm top because we've we've won two one more than any other win. So it's <laughs> uh, it's it's a safer bet as you're gonna get. Everybody else thinks that it's boring that I keep saying two one, but I just keep saying top of the table. Yeah. If it ain't but, broke, don't fix it. What I sometimes do on the away end, I said, oh, I, I think it's going to be a tough game. I do think it's going to be a tough game. Mm. But, uh, and I think, like you, I think it's it's going to be one all. And then when I do mm. our show, I say, <laughs> I lied. It's going to be 2-1. So, You've got to go for a win on your own, haven't you? You can't. I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. Though. I'm not going to lie to you. It, won't, it wouldn't be cricket <laughs> if I lied to you about football. It just wouldn't be right if I lied. George, thank you. For everybody else, have a look at the Wickham Way. It's it's well worth watching. George, 
Many, many thanks for coming on. It's so Thank much you very fun. much for having me. It's always a pleasure to, to come on and ramble about Wick and Wanderers. I really enjoy it. So thanks for having me. Well, you've done it with in abundance. You've witted <laughs> on in abundance. Take care, mate. Take Thank care. you.